Split cycle engines separate the four strokes of intake, compression, power and exhaust into two separate but paired cylinders. Many configurations have been developed, but none have ever matched the efficiency of conventional engines. Split cycle engines have had two major problems, breathing and thermal efficiency. The breathing problem was caused by high pressure gas trapped in the compression cylinder. The low thermal efficiency resulted from compressing the gas twice. The Scuderi split cycle engine solves both problems with its unique and patented concepts. Possibly the single most important breakthrough of the Scuderi design is firing after top dead center. Although normally considered bad practice, in a split cycle arrangement, firing after top dead center eliminates the losses created by recompressing the gas. The big problem was really how to fire after top dead center. In the Scuderi engine, this is accomplished by using a combination of high pressure air in the transfer passage and high turbulence in the power cylinder. The result is a split cycle engine with better efficiency and greater performance than a conventional engine. On the intake stroke, the intake valve on the compression cylinder opens when the piston is at the top of its travel or top dead center. The volume in the cylinder increases as the piston travels from top dead center to the end of its stroke or bottom dead center. Air is pulled into the cylinder at low pressure atmospheric. Once the piston reaches BDC, the intake valve closes and the piston begins its upward stroke. The volume in the cylinder decreases as the piston begins compressing the trapped air to higher pressures. When the pressure in the compression cylinder reaches approximately 50 bar, the crossover inlet valve opens and the high pressure air is pushed into the crossover passage. The intake valve opens when the piston is at TDC and the pressure in the cylinder immediately returns to atmospheric and the process repeats. The crossover outlet valve opens when the power piston is almost at TDC. High pressure air, 50 bar, from the crossover passage enters the power cylinder. The power cylinder, now at 50 bar, begins its downward travel, the power stroke. Fuel is injected into the power cylinder and combustion begins at approximately 10 to 14 degrees after TDC. The crossover outlet valve closes and pressure in the power cylinder increases even though the volume is also increasing. The piston continues down on its power stroke, with the volume continuing to grow and the pressure now decreasing. The piston reaches the bottom of its stroke, BDC, and the exhaust valve opens. The pressure in the cylinder is now at atmospheric and the exhaust gases are pushed out of the cylinder on the upward stroke of the piston. The piston reaches TDC and the process repeats. The net energy produced by the Scuderi split cycle engine is the difference between the two pressure volume curves. The compression and power pistons are arranged on the crankshaft so that the power piston leads the compression piston by about 20 degrees. This enables the compression piston to begin pushing compressed air into the crossover passage as air from the crossover passage is moving into the power cylinder. The same amount or mass of air moving into the crossover passage from the compression cylinder is also leaving the crossover passage into the power cylinder. The process is similar to a marble in, marble out concept. Picture a tube filled with marbles that is open on both ends. When one marble enters at one end, it pushes a marble out at the other end. In fact, the air pulled into the engine during the intake stroke is not the same air used in combustion during that rotation of the engine. The air must work its way through the crossover passage to eventually be used in combustion. This process enables the crossover passage to remain at a relatively constant pressure and minimizes pumping losses through the crossover passage. One of the biggest advantages of a split cycle engine is design flexibility. Many features that require added equipment, or are simply difficult to do in a conventional design, are easily accomplished in a split cycle configuration. For example, supercharging can be done simply by increasing the size of the compression cylinder. 
The Miller effect can be achieved simply by increasing the length of the power cylinder. Reducing piston friction can be accomplished by offsetting the cylinders. And a simple and cost-effective air hybrid design is accomplished by adding an air storage tank. The Scuderi air hybrid engine is the first hybrid system that makes sense. Because the Scuderi engine is really a compressor on one side and an engine on the other side, it simply requires the addition of an air storage tank and some controls to convert it into a hybrid system that can recapture and store energy that is normally lost during the operation of the engine. Here are examples demonstrating how compressed air can be utilized as an energy storage device. Air is compressed and flows through the crossover passage and is utilized during combustion in the power cylinder. The power cylinder is turned off while the vehicle remains engaged with the engine. The force of stopping the vehicle continues the engine pumping, compressing air into the storage tank. The compression cylinder is turned off and the power cylinder is fed pressurized air from the storage tank, eliminating the losses of compression. The compression cylinder takes in a charge of air that is only partially used by the power cylinder. The rest of the air is used to charge the storage tank. The compression cylinder turns off and the vehicle operates in high efficiency mode whenever the tank is full. For further information, please contact the Scuderi Group at www.scuderigroup.com.